everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sophie and I would love it if you hit that big red subscribe button down below. I talk about languages a lot, I make travel videos like I currently am today and I'm also currently on my semester abroad in Lyon, France so I make a lot of videos about that as well. But yeah, today's video is coming to you from the beautiful Grenoble um, in France. Um, it's quite a small city, I think, I mean, I don't know. It's definitely a lot smaller than Lyon, but that's the second biggest city in France. But yeah, I think it's a reasonable sized city. I don't know, um, and it's right near the French Alps. But funny thing, a friend told me that although it's right near the French Alps, it's actually one of the flattest cities in France. So that's interesting. I guess just all around it, there um, are mountains and there are people laughing at me vlogging. But um, that's part of the thing of vlogging in public and I guess they're not expecting to see many tourists at the moment anyway. So yeah, people are laughing at me vlogging. Oh well. But anyway, I'm going to be spending about 24 hours here in Grenoble. So I'm going to be exploring Grenoble and showing you everything that I get up to and letting you know all the things that you should do in 24 hours in Grenoble. So yeah, time to go explore Grenoble. C'est parti! So getting to Grenoble is pretty easy with buses and trains leaving from cities such as Lyon and Geneva which both have airports and I chose to get the bus from Lyon as I'm studying in Lyon and it was only about 7 euros one way and it stopped off at the airport in Lyon as well on the way so it's definitely very easy to get to Grenoble. So I am currently at Bastille which is basically this big hill um, in Grenoble that has this amazing view of the French Alps as you can see um, behind me I'm not sure, um, sure how well my camera is picking it up I feel like it's one of those things that always looks better in real life but yeah you can hike up here or get the cable car um, I spoke to the woman at the tourist office and she recommended I got the cable car up and hiked down so that's what I'm doing it cost me four euros twenty for a one-way ticket as a student I'm not too sure of the other prices right now um, for the other types of tickets but I will see if I can find them online and post them here for anybody who is interested so yeah I'm gonna wander around here and um, get some good pictures hopefully and hook it all in and yeah just explore this area and enjoy all the mountain views because that's the main reason I came to Grenoble to see the French Alps. On the hike back down I found some amazing photo spots that I wouldn't have found otherwise if I had just taken the cable car. So I highly recommend that if you are unsure about doing the hike up there, you just take the cable car up there and hike back down. It was a really easy hike down and personally in the future if I ever go back to Grenoble I will hike up there as well as it just seemed like such a lovely walk and there were even small children doing it, it was super easy. However, I'm not disappointed that I got the cable car up there as it was actually the first time that I got a cable car, at least the first time that I can remember. Anyway, afterwards I went for a lovely walk along the river and went to some of the spots that were highlighted on the map that I picked up from the tourist office and they actually mapped out a little walking route um, and it had loads of information about um, each of the different spots along the way. I chose to pick up the map in French in order to practice. Hello everybody! First of all, excuse the wet hair, um, I didn't check if there was a hairdryer in the hotel um, when booking it because pretty much every hotel I've ever been to has included a hairdryer so I didn't think to check that, I just assumed there would be a hairdryer. There wasn't a hairdryer as you can tell from the wet hair so you know, I just got to let my hair dry naturally this morning I guess so yeah. But anyway, I wanted to talk about how many days you should spend in Grenoble. Now, personally, I think one is enough. To be fair, I was originally going to stay one day um, and do it as a day trip from Lyon, but because of the curfew, when I looked at the time bus I arrived and I knew I wanted to have plenty of time to explore, I didn't want to feel rushed, I realised that I would be arriving after the curfew. And apparently you can get a certificate for long distance travel that allows you to arrive after the curfew, but I couldn't find any information on 
what's considered a, a long distance and I thought like Grenoble and Lyon is pretty close and the hotels were a lot cheaper than the fine so I was like you know I'm not gonna risk it because I feel like it's pretty close and personally I wouldn't consider it as long distance travel I don't know what the police consider it as and they would be the ones that would be checking my certificate if they see me out after curfew but yeah I decided not to take the risk and book a hotel because it doesn't seem like a very long distance to me personally um but yeah ideally I think one night oh it's not focusing <laughs> ideally I think one night is enough in one day is enough sorry if you're just staying within the city um obviously there are lots of like mountains outside um, around Grenoble so I feel like if you're into hiking it could be a good place to base yourself and do quite a few different hikes and then you might want to stay a bit longer depending on, depending on how many hikes um, you do. Personally I would definitely stay here longer if I was going on hikes um, although I wouldn't go hike on hikes in Grenoble at this time of year because of the snow and I've never gone hiking in snow before and also I don't know what the avalanche risk is but in the summer yeah maybe in the summer I'll come back and stay a few nights here and go hiking um, but I've never gone hiking alone so I don't know <laughs> maybe I'll find someone to go with me we'll see um I'm just not sure how safe hiking alone is yeah Anyway, and there is actually another like day trip that I've read about on a blog post that you can do from Grenoble to a castle. Um, I can't remember the name of the castle. I'll find the blog post and I'll put the name of the castle here. Um, I'm not going to this castle just because it's closed currently because, yeah, because of the pandemic. Most stuff, a lot of stuff is closed. So it's closed currently. So I don't see the point of taking a bus there just to go look at it from the outside. If I had more time I would, but like I've got to get a bus back this afternoon and I don't want to feel rushed. And I'm like, is it worth going on the way there, feeling really rushed, just stand outside and take a few photos? And I don't know how often the buses run, so I don't want to get there, stand outside and take a few photos and then have to wait an hour to get a bus back. If I could go around and look inside, I wouldn't matter, it wouldn't matter because I'd probably spend at least an hour there anyway, kind of thing. So yeah, if you're coming to Grenoble post-Covid or when the Covid restrictions are a little different, you may want to check out that castle, I've heard very good things about it. Um, so yeah. Oh yeah, about the hotel I'm in, in case you're interested, I'm staying in the Hotel 1924, um, it's pretty standard, it's pretty reasonable price, um, it was actually on offer so I got some money off of it that's why I put this one um I do feel like the breakfast is a bit expensive like when I was looking at booking.com it was like you can pay 13 euro something for breakfast and I was like mm. like and I was looking at the pictures it was just like standard breakfast like the type of stuff I would usually get in a hostel for five euro <laughs> just I mean just paying for the hotel for me is a lot as I usually stay in hostels because I'm a student and I'm on a budget but with the current situation I am choosing to only stay in hotels and airbnbs if I stay somewhere and preferably airbnbs that are like studios not a room in someone else's house also I kind of chose the hotel for the pic the views from on the pictures in all the pictures they're like single rooms had really good street views and this is where I go wrong all the time. I always pick hotels and hostels and stuff by the views I see in the pictures. But obviously they always show you the rooms with the best view and not every room has that view. And I mean, I have a street view, but pff, not like the ones in the, in the pictures. I'll show you the view I've got. I mean, it's not terrible, but then you've got this crane and to be fair, it is worse if you like... Oh, I'm accidentally zooming in. Oh no. Yeah. That bit's not very nice. But I mean, the yellow building, I mean, it's not terrible. But I was kind of hoping to get some cute hotel Insta pics, like the ones you see people get in Paris all the time, to kind of get a similar kind of vibe to that, because I feel like I got a similar vibe to that from the photos that I did see on booking.com, but I thought like I don't get that vibe at all from that. I mean, the radiator's pretty though. It looks kind of vintagey. I'll show you. <laughs> get get some Instagram pics with the radiator. That's what I'll do. I mean, I would also show you the whole room, but I feel like I probably should have done that as soon as I got in the room, not 
now whilst my bed is like a mess <laughs> it's got my stuff all over it and I've been sleeping in it I mean I've got a big TV which is pretty decent and I just put on some random like I don't know I think I put on art because it was the first show, uh, channel that I recognised the name of last night I was just watching some random documentary about I can't even remember about where it was about but watching it in French I was only watching it in the background really whilst he my, my, my burger came from Ubi's I know Try the local casino whilst I'm travelling and I look at Birkin. I mean, if the restaurants were open, I may have gone and tried some local cuisine, but I may as well have just got Birkin King because restaurants are shut. 6 pm curfew. It was easy. And the bathroom's pretty big, to be fair. I mean, pretty decent, but again, it's messy. The only problem is that sink doesn't. The water doesn't go down by itself, I have to lift the plug out, but by the time I, if I lift the plug out every time I use it, then my hands are dirty and then I want to wash my hands again, but then it fills up again. So I don't know, I've been lifting the plug out every so often because otherwise it fills up too much. Um, I'll probably lift it out again before I go. But yeah, and there's me. So before getting the bus back to Lyon, I headed to a few of the spots on the self-guided tour, which you can find on the map that you can pick up from the tourist office. These are all spots that I'd been to the previous day, but just hadn't gotten any footage of, so I went back just to do that. There were also some other spots that I didn't show you, for example, like Place Victor Hugo, which was just completely under construction when I went there, so that's why I didn't show you it, because it wasn't very pretty. So yeah, and then I went, to the river and sat by the river they had these deck chairs there and that was literally my favorite thing that I did in Grenoble just sitting on those deck chairs as it was such a beautiful day it was so sunny and just enjoying the view of the French Alps so yeah I highly re recommend that so yeah that's it for this video make sure to hit that big red subscribe button down below give this video a big thumbs up and turn on that notification bell to see more videos from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!